It seems these days that our country is divided into two halves in several different ways. The same goes for my home state of Illinois. There's red versus blue, liberal versus conservative, religious versus non-religious, but there's also still the haves versus the have-nots. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the communities in Illinois where the people are struggling financially more often than not. So let's take a look at the 10 poorest towns and cities in Illinois. Number 10, Sorrento. Sorrento is a tiny town of only 467 in Bond County, which is in Southern Illinois. The median household income is only $27,500. 31.3% of the residents live below the poverty line, with women between the ages of 45 and 54 being the most affected. The last survey conducted had 155 people reported as being in the workforce. Out of that number, 59 people said they work in healthcare, 24 people were in manufacturing, and 19 people listed construction as their occupation. Despite the low wages, the home ownership rate is 73.5%, which is above the national average. The average property value is $40,200. Typically, areas with low wages will have a higher crime rate than average, and that is the case with Sorrento. The violent crime rate is 73% above the national average. The chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 28. Number 9. Robbins Robbins is a southern suburb of Chicago. It's a predominantly black community. According to Wikipedia, Robbins was one of the first incorporated black communities in the U.S., and people would move there to get out of the crowded city and to avoid the racial tensions of the early 20th century. The most recent demographics compiled for the city list 84.2% black, 5.4% white, and 8.4% Hispanic. They have a population of just over 5,000. The most common industries in this community are in healthcare and social assistance, and transportation and warehousing. These types of positions don't typically pay all that well, so 42% of the residents live in poverty. The median household income is $27,209. Low wages make it hard to buy a home, so the home ownership rate is only 51.8%, and the median home value is $76,400. Unfortunately, low wages also tend to mean that there is a higher crime rate, and that is an issue in Robbins. The violent crime rate is 136% above the national average, and the chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 49. Number 8. Cairo. Cairo is located at the southern border of Illinois. It's actually the southernmost town in the state. It's also one of the saddest towns in Illinois. 100 years ago, it had around 15,000 people living there, but today it's somewhere in the ballpark of 2,500. The town has gone through racial tensions, riots, and floodings. The economic decline has caused people to leave in droves. 38.3% of the residents live below the poverty line. The median household income is only $25,847. The last survey results listed 914 people in the workforce. The most common jobs were in food preparation, represented by 159 people. I think those people are probably finding positions in other towns, because when I've driven past the Cairo exit on Interstate 57, all of the food and gas signs for the exit have been removed, so it doesn't look like there are many, if any, food service businesses left in this town. 115 people indicated they worked in sales and related occupations, and 112 people listed management as their job title. Number 7. Venice. Venice is a small town on the Mississippi River in Madison County near St. Louis with 1,890 residents. It is a minority community with white people only making up 5.17% of the population. 29.9% of the residents live below the poverty line, with women between the ages of 25 and 34 being impacted the most. The high poverty rate is due to the median household income being only $25,511. The most common industries in Venice are healthcare and social assistance. Out of the 770 employed people in this town, 217 work in those two fields. The next most common industry is retail sales, represented by 94 workers. When an area has low wages, property values also tend to be low, so the median value of homes in this community is only $35,000. Number 6. Olin. Olin is located way down at the very southern tip of Illinois in Pulaski County. Only 463 people call the town home. According to the last survey, 159 of those people were in the workforce. 
The top three jobs were represented by 23 people working in education or library services, 23 people in food service, and 18 people in healthcare support occupations. Obviously, none of these are typically high-paying positions, so the median household income in Olin is only $25,074. This is basically a town that's out in the sticks. The one good thing I could find about it is that there is very little crime in the area. It's safer than 97% of other U.S. communities. Number 5. Madison Madison is a small town of 3,981, located in Madison and St. Clair counties, so it's close to St. Louis. The median household income in Madison is $24,805, so 30.1% of the residents live below the poverty line. That isn't much of a surprise when you realize that the top two industries in this town are food service and retail sales, both of which are known for paying employees as little as possible. Along with the low wages, the median home value for Madison is only $41,000. Zillow currently has a two-bedroom house that's priced at only $25,000. The town also has more crime than it should. The chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 59. There's really not much about this place that would make someone want to move there. Number 4. East St. Louis this comes as no surprise, but East St. Louis is one of the poorest areas in the state of Illinois. This town has one of the saddest backstories. Back in the 1950s, there were over 80,000 people living there. They had plenty of work in industrial positions, and the town was thriving. Musical acts like Miles Davis and Ike and Tina Turner became famous through their performances in East St. Louis clubs. But then things went downhill. Railroads were restructured, factories started closing one by one, and other industries started packing up and leaving. Today, they have a population of just a little over 27,000, with 48.9% of them living below the poverty line. The median household income is only $23,072. The average commute time for workers is 25 minutes, so that probably means they're having to cross over the Mississippi River into the city of St. Louis to find jobs, unless they want to work on the riverboat casinos. The city also has way too much crime. The last reported data from the FBI had 36 homicides listed. The violent crime rate is 169% above the national average, and the chance of being a victim is 1 in 39. Number 3. Carbondale Carbondale is the home to Southern Illinois University, so one would think that there would be quite a few specialized jobs with decent incomes in this town, but sadly that is not the case. This town of 25,000 people has a median household income of only $22,025. A quick glance at the various job listing boards shows that most of the work available is in retail and food service. I had to scroll through four pages of jobs before I found one that wasn't in the service industry. It was for the university, but it only pays $12.37 an hour. It's really difficult to get ahead in life when that's all you earn for your time. That's why 43.1% of the town lives below the poverty line. One of the few upsides that I can see to living in Carbondale is that you can buy cheap property. You can get a three-bedroom home for less than $60,000. The other thing that I consider a positive is that the town has some diversity to it. The population demographics are 58.4% white, 26.1% black, 5.68% Asian, and 5.66% Hispanic. Every year, the city of Carbondale celebrates the Indian holiday Diwali, as well as the Southern Illinois Irish Festival. They're also known for having film festivals and free concerts for the residents. Number 2. Centerville. Centerville is a minority majority town in St. Clair County in Southern Illinois, with the demographic makeup being 94.4% black, 3.7% white, and less than 1% classified as Hispanic. It's considered part of the St. Louis metro area. It's a 12 minute drive from East St. Louis, so it's not all that surprising that this area is poverty stricken. 45% of the residents fall below the poverty line. This is a small town of just a little over 5,000 people, but it's a high crime area. They reported 274 crimes in the last year on file, so the crime rate is 124% higher than the national average. The chance of being the victim of a crime is 1 in 18. A lot of the crime can be explained by the fact that the median household income is only $18,955. A lack of opportunity can drive people to desperate acts. Two of the most common industries in Centerville are food services and retail sales, so there aren't that many decent jobs in this town. 
The only solution is to move, but that's really hard to do when you don't have any money. Although, it seems like the men find a way out, because for every 100 adult females in Centerville, there are only 77.2 males. That seems weird to me. Number 1. Elizabethtown Elizabethtown sits on the Ohio River, which creates the border between Illinois and Kentucky. The town has a population of 261. According to the last survey done by the Census Bureau, there were 81 people in Elizabethtown who were working. Out of that number, 21 worked in healthcare, 10 in mining, and 9 in construction. The highest paid positions were in the categories of agriculture, forestry, fishing and hunting, and mining, but the average income in those roles was only $38,750. The median household income is far below that, at only $16,607. Due to the low wages, 53.1% of the town's residents fall below the poverty line. On the plus side, since the wages in this area are low, the housing market also skews cheap. Zillow currently has a two-bedroom home listed with a sales price of only $57,000. That's about a quarter of the national average home price, but the home ownership rate in this town is only 47.9%. If you live in one of these communities, is it as bad as it seems? Leave a comment letting me know. I hope you enjoyed this video, if so give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to show your support. Thank you so much for watching, until next time I remain stuck in the current field.